Hey, Popcorn Kid Crew. It's Ms. V, and I'm going to read with you. Have you affirmed yourself today? Because you know what we're getting ready to do. That's right. We're getting ready to tell ourselves that we are the greatest. Are you the greatest? Yes, you are. am your witness. You are the greatest. Now you tell yourself that every day. Check in because I'm going to be checking. I am the greatest. Now, speaking of the greatest, this is one of the greatest stories that I've read yet. It's a beautiful story about a mommy and her family. Now the mommy has cancer. And it's a story that shows how their love is developed around their mommy during her sickness. The story is called The Goodbye Cancer Garden by Jenna Matthews. Children, let's hope one day that a cure is found for this terrible monster called cancer. I've had friends and family who've suffered from cancer. Have you? Let's keep our fingers crossed that a cure is found for this terrible, terrible monster. Are you ready to get started? Here we go. It's a wonderful story. Can you see? Get close for you. Let me read the introduction for you. For everyone who walked through the valley with us and for those who journey through there now, Psalm 23, in memory of Aunt Janelle. I love Psalm. Beautiful passages in the Bible. In our backyard, where first base used to be, is a special garden. We didn't expect to plant it, but Mom says things didn't always go as expected. For example, Mom didn't expect the doctor to say she had breast cancer, but in January, with the backyard under a blanket of snow, she and Dad told us the news. For a few weeks now, Mom went back and forth to the hospital for x-rays and tests. Sometimes she looked sad, and my brother and I felt a little worried. So one day we all went together to meet Mom's doctor. You must be Janie and Jeffrey, the doctor said. I've heard so much about you. Is Mom better yet, Jeffrey asked. Not yet, she said. But we're working very hard to make her feel better. Probably by pumpkin time. Pumpkin time. Jeffrey smiled. Pumpkins. I love pumpkins. That gave me an idea. I wonder what she's thinking. And the doctor said around pumpkin. What time is pumpkin time? What time of year is that? When kids go to the pumpkin patch? When you have pumpkin pie? Pumpkin seeds, what time of the year is that? Let's keep reading and find out. On Valentine's Day, we helped mom pack an overnight bag for the hospital. The next day, she was having an operation to take the cancer out. Things are going to be tough for a while, dad said, but Janie's thought of a way that she could help. I led everyone to the window and pointed at the hard February ground. The ground is hard because it's winter and there was ice and snow and everything. Let's plant a garden, I said. Watching it grow and eating healthy veggies will remind us of mom getting better. Then before we know it, 
Hello, pumpkins, and goodbye, cancer. Mom reached her arms around us. The goodbye cancer garden, she said. What a perfect idea. So it's February now, and by the time the pumpkins grow, hoping that her cancer will be gone. After the operation, it took a month of arm stretches before mom could hug us again. The doctor said no lifting, so friends and family started dropping by with groceries and big pots of yummy smelling food. Our neighbors brought a surprise for me to put on mommy's head. We're here to serve the queen, they said. Mom's eyes sparkled, and soon, so did our house. Look at all the friends coming by. You guys, that's what people do. People love you, and people support you, and people want to help. One sunny Saturday in March, Dad and Jeffrey dug the garden bed while Mom and I drew a map. Everybody chooses two vegetables, I said. I already knew mine, cucumbers and tomatoes. I want carrots and cherries, Jeffrey said. Dad explained that cherries are a, fru a fruit and grow on trees. Jeffrey chose green beans instead. Dad decided on lettuce and potatoes. Hmm, Mom said. I'll do peppers and... Oh, we almost forgot. Peppers and especially, what guys? Pumpkins. Don't forget the pumpkins. It's going to be a beautiful garden. They're mapping out their plans. It's a good idea. In April, Mom started chemotherapy, a super strong medicine that destroys leftover bits of cancer. When she felt too sick to eat dinner, Dad made her applesauce. When she was too tired to get out of bed, I showed her seed catalogs and Jeffrey drew her pictures. When the doctor said that the chemo would make her hair fall out, Mom said, let's have a head shaving party. We tried ribbons around mom's curls for us to cut and keep. Then my uncle shaved her hair closer than his buzz cut. You look weird, mom, Jeffrey said, but dad and I thought she looked beautiful. She is beautiful. Look at her. She's a beautiful woman. By May, the last frost had come and gone, and Mom was tired of being cooped up inside. We're going to the garden store, she announced. The store was alive with colors and smells. While Mom rested on a bench, Dad and I piled the cart with plants, soil, and mulch. Where is Jeffrey? she said. Under here, he called. Mom laughed. I like your green wig. Can I borrow it? Sometime. Look at Jeffrey hiding in a grocery cart. He's so silly. He's Jeffrey silly. The next weekend, we put in the baby plants first tomatoes and peppers. Then we traced lines in the dirt where the carrots and lettuce seeds. Next, we built a bamboo tower and pushed in cucumber seeds around it. Finally, we poked holes and dropped in beans and bits of sprouting potatoes. So it's going to be a beautiful garden. Look at that. Last but not least, Mom said, I will personally plant the pumpkin seeds. Just in time for summer, the doctor changed mom's chemo medicine. Sometimes her bones ached or her feet tingled, but that didn't stop her from doing a little weeding and watering. 
In June, we played baseball every night after dinner and hit a few foul balls into the garden. Look, flowers, Jeffrey said, and tiny tomatoes. I patted the leafy plants and whispered, keep up the good work. Their garden is growing. Looks beautiful. They're gonna have vegetables very soon. In July, we drove 13 hours to my grandparents' house near the beach. Salt water and sunshine are just what you need, Grandpa told Mom. I took pictures of Mom under the umbrella with my baby cousin, rubbing sun cream on their matching heads. And every day we collected shiny treasures to take home for decorating the garden. Pulling back into the driveway, we were amazed. The garden had grown into a jungle. Oh my goodness. Best of all was August. We celebrated the end of chemo with a picnic. We invited everyone who helped us. We served cream cheese and cucumber sandwiches, potato salad, pickled green beans, tossed salad with lettuce, peppers, and tomatoes, and carrot juice. Did you grow all these yourself, my friend Nikki asked. Not everything, Jeffrey said. We don't know how to grow cream cheese yet. By the middle of October, Mom was finally done with her cancer treatment. How about we celebrate with a little baseball, she said. Right away, Jeffrey whacked a foul ball into the garden. What's that over there, I said, tiptoeing through the vines. Towards something. Awesome. Don't look, you guys. Tiptoeing. What do you think it is? Let's see. There, under elephant ear leaves, lay two perfect pumpkins. Two perfect pumpkins. Look at that. Wow. Good job, guys. Pumpkins, Jeffrey and I yelled at the same time. Mom blinked away her happy tears. How could we have forgotten them, she said. The four of us pulled at the pumpkins with all of our might and landed in a big heap right in the middle of the goodbye cancer garden. It's beautiful. Goodbye cancer. We spent the rest of the day making pumpkin bread and roasting pumpkin seeds. Not all the seeds. Some we let dry in the sun. We're growing more pumpkins next year. The end. You guys, I have one special request. Let's continue to pray that this terrible monster cancer goes away and leaves our friends and families alone forever. Miss V is here for you. I wish you all peace and love. Can't forget to give you a hug. Have a wonderful day. Kisses.